This video is part two of what we have read in relation to the Oxcart Man. Hi, I'm Julia and thanks for stopping by. Welcome to my channel, Sharing the Discovery. I am here to share with you resources that we are using in our homeschool in the hopes that it can be inspiration for you in your homeschool journey or learning journey alongside your kids. Um, you don't even need to be homeschooling solely, but there's always learning that happens, right? It doesn't ever end. <laughs> learning is a, a lifelong process, day in, day out. So this month, um, as members of Read Aloud Revival's Premium, we have been um, diving in to themes surrounding the Oxcart Man by Donald Hall, um, pictures by Barbara Cooney. We have gone to Old Sturbridge Village, which is close by to us. I purchased a calendar for my kids where they can remove the numbers and the days and we can renew the calendar every month. And we've been reading books um, that relate to the time period that Oxcart Man is set in and um, books in relation to um, trading and purchasing and all of those types of things. So this video is part two. If you want to see part one, um, I, I can put it in the link below or go to my channel page and you'll find it. Hopefully it'll give you lots of inspiration to bounce off of if you're looking at the Oxcart Man, or even just to provide inspiration if you are wanting to focus on one picture book, uh, a quality picture book, and you want to know how to kind of make it more of a fuller um, exploration. Well, these videos hopefully will provide um, some ideas to how to make it a fuller expo exploration for you and your children. So after reading The Oxcart Man, I pulled this book out called The Aesop for Children. Um, this is in my mom's homeschooling resources, her, her library that she had collected over the years. So I remember this being read um, to myself and my siblings when I was young. And it's a collection of short Aesop's fables and their stories with a little lesson at the end of it. Here we have the wolf and the goat and you have the story doo -doo -doo, and then you have a little lesson at the end of it, uh, the moral of the story. I wouldn't call the Oxcart Man like a, a, a fable that necessarily teaching um, a moral or a lesson, but I do think that there are definitely um, uh, principles that can be gleaned from the way that he worked in the right season and he harvested in the right season. He gained reward from the work that he put in. Um, so I felt like, you know, reading a bit more uh, of some stories where principles could be learned from would be fitting. These Aesops are much requested by my kids. Um, it's probably the first book that they request to read in the morning and they seem to be well received and can provide content for a further conversation. In my previous video on the Oxcart Man, I had mentioned that we had watched an episode from Reading Rainbow about um, the host's visit to Old Stewart Village and the reading of the Oxcart Man that happened within that Reading Rainbow ep episode. Also included in that episode were several um, other picture book suggestions, kind of along the lines of the Oxcart Man, and I happen to have one of those picture picture book suggestions already um, in the sunlight curriculum books that my mom had gathered over the years and this one is called wagon wheels by barbara brenner and interestingly enough it's about um, a black family about a black pioneer family who goes to stake a claim out west and i say interestingly enough because we recently did a whole unit of study on the underground railroad and about um some of the black experience that has happened in our country. So to pick up another book about a black experience has been really neat to kind of tie that in together. 
This is based on a true story about um, three brothers who stick together when their father when their mother dies and their father needs to go off and stake the claim and the brothers have to stick together and then go out to meet their father a great adventure story based on a true true happening this is a book that i came across separately from any of the related resources to the oxcart man that i had come across um, when I Was Young in the Mountains by Cynthia Ryland. And as you can see, this has won an honor right here, a Caldecott honor book. Um, this is a book about a little girl who experienced life um, in the Appalachians. Um, and so it's not set in the same time period as the Oxcart Man, but it is does happen in the past. Like there's mentions of outhouses and pumping water and, you know, the stoves here so it is set um, in the past probably in the in the early 1900s would be my guess um, so this was another interesting book about the past when I was young in the mountains that um, I happened to have on hand due to another um, connecting resource I'd like to share the read aloud that we are working through currently it's called the wheel on the school um, I have shared this book um, in, in another video. I love things that correlate on a number of different levels. That really gives me great satisfaction when we pursue a resource. And this is one of those books. So we were looking at the Netherlands in another aspect of our schooling. And this also connects to the Oxcart Man because the, the wheels that were used on the wagons in, in the Netherlands at this time were very similar to the wheels that we saw at Old Stewart Village and the wheels that we can see represented in the Oxcart Man. And so <laughs> with having this book all about wheels, those old time wheels, it just seems to bring it um, more to life. We as a result of reading this, we actually looked up some pictures on what um, a wheel um, back in that day would look like, like what were the different parts of the wheel, the hub, the spokes, then the, you know, the wooden rim and then the outer metal rim. <clears throat> this is very much requested by my son in particular, my oldest son. Um, yeah, he will often ask to read a chapter whenever we have an opportunity. A suggestion that Sarah McKenzie at Read Aloud Revival made was to seek out books that have the same illustrator and the same author of Oxcart Man. So Donald Hall is the author and Barbara Cooney is the illustrator. And so I happen to also have um, a book that was illustrated by Barbara Cooney. Um, and um, this is called Chanticleer and the Fox. And this is a story set in the medieval um, era, if you can tell even from the picture picture here. Um, and it's kind of, I think it's like, it says it's adapted from the Canterbury Tales. And it seemed very like similar to an Aesop fable um, to me in my perspective, very much ha having that flavor of having a moral to the story, um, talking about thinking too much of oneself and how thinking too much of oneself can cause one to be in danger as the as Chanticleer, who was the rooster in the story, became in, in danger with the fox when the fox tried to flatter him and he fell for it and um, almost got devoured by the fox but was saved in the nick of time and was able to learn that lesson that vanity doesn't get him many places. So with the suggestion of, of seeking out books by the author, um, this is Lucy's Christmas written by Donald Hall. And this is actually his um, memories written down of stories that his mother would tell him about her childhood, which I think is so neat because I'm telling my kids stories of my own childhood now before they go to bed at night. And I find it so um, enriching to have stories passed down. I can remember stories my dad and my mom told me and my siblings that we would beg for. We'd beg for these stories and now my children do the same. They ask for, can you tell me a story mom about when you were a little girl? And so it's really neat to have um, 
it written down in in a tangible form about somebody else's mom um, the stories that she passed down to her um, son and this is not like a story that that goes um, that is how would I say this this is a story that includes a whole bunch of different um, facets that he can remember his mom mentioning. It's not a story picture book in like a straightforward form where it's focusing on one thing and, and follows that trail. It does do that. It follows the trail. It has conclusions and you can tell where it's going, but it has a lot of other additional details in it that is just like really neat and really reflects um, the times um, as far as the fact that this was a lived experience. This isn't fiction that somebody um, came up with, which is worthy as well, can be a worthy expression and, and a way of learning about the times. But this was just had a really neat flavor about it. We also were able to find Lucy's Summer, which is the second book um, that Donald Hall wrote based on his mother's recollection of her um, childhood and um, just also very similar to Lucy's Christmas same kind of flavor same kind of a lived experience you can tell it's not um, a work of fiction but very engaging um, it has the same themes some of the same themes in it of, of the oxcart man of trading um, for goods and services um, and also um, has this really interesting undertone of their mother pursuing um, a living um, of, of hat making um, in their home and how Lucy could remember her mom starting up that business. The last three books I'm going to share are books that we haven't quite gotten to yet. We haven't read them, but I have them set aside and the children have like the children have actually looked through them a little bit and have shown interest in reading them. We just haven't gotten around to actually reading them yet. So when I'm showing you, just know that I, you know, we haven't read them together. This is called The Milkman's Boy, also by Donald Hall, which is why we have it. And looking through these pages, the illustrations are just gorgeous. Um, really detailed and they have like this kind of like a golden hue which is reminiscent of just old times I guess um, so it looks like a, a an interesting read it looks like engaging pictures and um, also around the the same um, time period is probably the Lucy books I would guess this was a book recommended by um, Read Loud Revival, The Year at Maple Hill Farm, and this will tie in wonderfully to our calendar, um, learning about our calendar and learning about like um, nature and farm life and how the different seasons are expressed in different ways um, through wildlife and through farming. So you can see all the months on the front page here. Um, again, this book has been flipped through by my children um, and by me, and it looks like it's it's a really interesting read, um, having lots of details, but not like an overwhelming amount of details. You can see all of the, the um, pictures on the page outlining um, different details about, um, let's see, April. This is the page for April. Um, this looks like it could well be a favorite. The last book I'll share with you is this Oxford Illustrated book of American children's poems. And the reason why I got it out of the library is it's edited by Donald Hall. This is actually um, a Sunlight uh, recommended book as well. So I actually had this book read to me when I was um, in school. We um, haven't read this book yet, but I did pull out a poem book um, the other night um, because I was just organizing some school stuff and the kids and I, we sat on the floor for maybe half an hour with the kids picking out different poems in the book that we would read together. 
And I had thought, well, maybe we would read through this whole book together, you know, over time, we'd read one or two poems a day or something. And maybe we'll do that still. But in our experience with the other poem book, it was very um, delightful to have the kids um, point out what was interesting to them and to have them um, really listen to the poems because they were interested in them. And I just thought that maybe we could try it with this poem book, see if there is um, some gleaning that can happen here, some, some, um, yeah, just some flipping through the pages and seeing what sticks out. Um, maybe, yeah, again, like, I don't know exactly what we'll do with that. Whatever we do, I will try to facilitate it in such a way that the children are engaged. We've been bouncing off this stack of books here for the past couple weeks. We don't read all these books at once or in one day. Um, I will be pulling from this stack throughout the month, and I have been pulling from this stack. Um, like I said, we haven't even read all of them yet. Um, if we're going to be home for a whole day, any given day, I will pull one or two of these books to have on hand as part of our school for that day. If we're going to be out on that day, I probably won't um, pull from the stack. I kind of save these for when, days when we're going to be at home and could use a little more content to our school day. Thanks for joining me and sharing the discovery.